Greetings and welcome. Thank you for joining us here at RP MMO Radio. And today I will be your host, Ashen Phoenix. And the two ladies that are always here because somebody needs to help keep me in line are Sib. Hello. And our guild leader of disaster, Jazz. Hello. <laughs> She's mean to people because guild I leaders am. are terrible, terrible people. I am. Like the supervisors of the online world. <laughs> She's giving me Supreme Commander, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Supreme Lord, Emperor, Commander, Caesar. Yeah. Overlord the third, Darth. And just insert my character at the end of the <laughs> Whichever yeah. character I choose. Nah. Uh -huh. All right. Well, thank you guys, everybody here, for joining us today, either live uh, at, our, at uh, Twitch or at any of our podcast locations on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, Podbean, Google Play, the usual places at RPMMO Radio. And, of course, you can always visit us at our website, get all our up-to-date stuff at rpmmoradio.com. So we got I got a pretty good show for you today. We're going to go over uh, gaming levels versus RP strength and the correlation between the two. What does it matter? Can you be taken seriously if you're level one and you're, you're claiming yourself to be the emperor? <laughs> the short answer is probably not. But before we get into that, we got some news, uh, and for that, we're going to go into what the three of us have been or haven't been doing in uh, roleplay in whatever game, which I think we're all pretty much at ESO at this point, Elder Scrolls Online. We have corrupted you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it is also an unfortunately limited, <laughs> limited venue at this point. There's not... It is. When was the last new MMO that came out that was like, oh, I absolutely have to jump on that? Uh, yeah. No, I'm actually asking you that. It's not rhetorical. Oh. <laughs> I really honestly can't think of anything. The um, last the last game that I was truly excited about was Landmark, and we all know yeah. how that ended. Yeah, so Landmark. Yeah. That was the one I was really it, excited or as about. I, like I to, even invested in. See, and look, that just shows how good their corruption is because it's not Landmark. It was EverQuest Next. Yes. Yeah. So, that's geez, true. I know the one was that Pantheon. Actually, the one that just. Pantheon is still. That's the one people are kind of excited for. I think looks like a. It looks like Vanguard from 10 years ago to me, and I think they're promising a lot more than they'll be able to produce. But I'm also not a fan of the Tron aesthetics and glowing stuff cracked skin stuff but that's also, more of a personal thing conan also it's like all yeah conan exiles is one that looks sort of interesting to yeah. me beyond the swinging you know what mm -hmm. um <laughs> pantheon is going to be a bit swinging too... wind socks everywhere yes yes <laughs> they have the wrong absolutely wrong mechanics but anyway um pantheon hey, is going to be group oriented and I'm not sure how well that's going to work for most working adults. So yeah, yeah. It turns out a lot of times, especially in video games, uh, people suck. It's funny how that translates over from the real world. <laughs> it really does, yeah. Because yeah. people suck in general, and yeah. <clears throat> you get into a, a situation where most people work, and we all work different schedules. Mm -hmm. and it makes it hard. Always and... getting into the game at the same time because you have. To do group content is but gonna jazz be what if i told you you too could apply for a pug group oh god Ooh, now how much would now. you pay <laughs> would you pay 49.99 <laughs> over an installment of 15 years yeah. no no um, all right so we'll, we'll hit jazz up here so what you've been doing okay. in game jazz well in game i've been organizing the guild and trying to get a workable uh hierarchy of ranks because in ESO there's no IC ranks the guild is constructed by account which makes it impossible to do it by character. have ranks yeah you can't do it by character like you could at EQ um so I had to set it up on our site so we can keep track of whose rank is what as well as having in-game ranks for people and how they help and whatever oh Asili. I've never split it before that's new for me um so that's been a hard kind of to wrap my head around and organize like it needs to be organized. Um, I've also been reading a lot of, you know, news when I'm bored, um, keeping track of some games that 
I'm interested in, like yeah. Pantheon and mm. other ones. Yeah, which we'll get to. She's got a few. Yeah. She's got a couple in there even I've only recently heard of because I've not been paying that close of attention. But So what about you, Sib, my dear, my love, my honey bunny? <laughs> um, basically trying to log in and uh, just hoping to catch RP here and there. Doing some leveling stuff, questing stuff. Uh, I haven't really logged into Final Fantasy in forever, mm -hmm. but I'm just having a lot of fun in ESO. I, it's my kind of game. I don't know why, but I like to read up on the lore and stuff about it, and just that's about it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah about this, about similar to you, but uh, kind of trying to get to know the character of uh, Kinnix Sulgal. Dark Brotherhood assassin who doesn't, you know, like any real assassin, of course, that's the first thing out of his mouth is, uh, oh, by the way, I'm an assassin. Cause that's, what <laughs> how, that's, that's how all good roleplay assassins go about it, right? Everybody, mm -hmm. right. everything we yeah. can all agree yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah, he's actually not told a single person yet. <gasps> yeah. But, uh, no, I... Oh, oh go ahead. there's one thing I did. I did set up a Twitter account, and I have been... I got a, a, a Facebook page so I can kind of do recaps on the shows. Mm -hmm. and I'll have to not that, that into the website then. <laughs> not that I'm going to be the only one doing them, but I wanted to get us more, I don't know what you'd call it. Interaction. Interaction, yeah. So people <laughs> have another place to go to interact. Yeah, yeah. that's an idea. I am on Facebook at Simbay and at Twitter. You might want to actually spell that one out because it's... You oh, got little, you got silent it's, ages in there. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I can't remember my Twitter thing. I'll have to look it up and double check, make sure I get that right. But it's just uh, on Facebook, it's S I B H underscore capital B A E B. Yeah, and that was before the stupid version of Hey Bay came out. So that don't that's not what that's about. That was no, just the last I've had name. This character for. Since Back in Swotor, yeah, the old Republic. <laughs> I just like their style with it. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that's always helpful. The more trying, still trying to get our name out there. Anybody listening? If you like what you hear, you know, like us, friend us, subscribe us, uh, comment, but only if it's positive. We don't take any negativity here, none whatsoever. You Wrong. fucking <laughs> douchebag. No I'm kidding. We want everything. We want to hear what we're doing good, what we're doing bad. But uh, as for me, we had uh, just been, like I said, getting to know it. Uh, we did have that one interaction with uh, between Sib and I. We liked because uh, the characters were playing in uh, ESO, the played back in the beginning, so they were kind of starting to get together. But then we kind of drifted off from the game, but. She brought that character in, and there was a very it was, it was what maybe five ten minutes worth of role play just at the end yeah. of something, and it was very intense because they had separated, and of course now we have to come up kind of with a character description of why the two of them haven't been together or seen each other in all this time, and it was a lot of fun, and it was you know he was very aloof and because he's not a very nice guy as any assassin would actually be. It turns out they're not tender little teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't always the easiest thing for me because I'm a pleaser at a, a lot of times and I don't, while I like conflict and role play, I like it to be, you know, at a certain, you know, level and it, it's hard to maintain the being a constant douchebag. <laughs> it's hard to step out of your comfort zone. It really mm -hmm. is. And RP gives you that chance and that's why I, I like it. I mean, yeah, I pl I'm trying different personalities on ESO. Like Volley is like, sarcastic doesn't give a crap well quick to fight she's and it's really not my comfort zone mm -hmm. but i feel like i'm doing okay <laughs> yeah yeah it does it, it's hard to sometimes maintain the personality especially when it you know when it for me my my weaknesses is women it's not not in the way you're thinking but uh ups, <laughs> i don't like upsetting women at least you know when they especially when they don't deserve it because let's be honest there's some but you're just like you know what fuck you you're, you're kind of being a giant douche right now but uh it, you know making women cry and things like that that that's just one of those things that always you know pulls at my heartstrings i can't stand to see a woman crying because i'm a chauvinistic pig that way you're welcome and yes i'm gonna <laughs> hold the door open for you i don't care if you're capable of doing it 
it's just polite. But yeah, so so just keeping your back to somebody that we were supposed to be involved with and then just walking away from her as it was raining and drizzling down and he pulled his cowl up over his head just like yeah <laughs> that's 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 if that was a movie that had been a great scene and he every, half the audience had been like he's neat and the other half had been like i hate him he should be on a lifetime movie and be killed but you can guess which half of switch on that one <laughs> so that's pretty much where we've been at and just getting to know the characters but <clears throat> excuse me so let's go ahead, we'll switch over and hit our news up. And I think first up we got uh, Sib with something from Ku, Ku, uh, a game called Con, Con, Conan? Conan. Con, Conan O'Brien <laughs> Exiles, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, mine comes from, uh, Co it's about Conan Exiles. And I found it on MMO RPG article by Susie Ford. And it just talks about a, uh, basically the Funcom devs posted a new cool survey asking what the Conan Exile community would like to see the team focus on next. And uh, questions include where players will be seen, would like to see development go next, and what current existing features could be improved upon, and what tech aspects need improvement. Uh... Which, you know, you always say your voice is not heard when you do these surveys. But you never know. It might be worth going and checking out. And especially our peers, you know, we feel like we don't get heard at all. And, all it hurt, you know, all you do is spend a few minutes, go fill it out. Uh, there's spots to put comments. So just go put up some comments saying, hey, focus on us a little bit. I've got, oh, a couple of quotes, too, from people who commented on the, the actual article and it's uh theo critis and i'm sorry if i butcher the names i wouldn't worry about it <laughs> that's, that's what they get bad. for having weird i'm names. not really good at names but it said his quote was help we have no direction isn't asking the community usually a recipe for failure <laughs> and uh yeah a lot of us feel that way but you never know yeah. And, uh, well, it other one was... It's okay to ask. It's just don't expect everything that's been told to be taken seriously because people ask for yeah. stupid, stupid things sometimes. Yeah, but then you get the ones that ask for what they Real really stuff, want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's always so... worth doing. It never hurts for companies to listen, but there's, there's, I've seen, we've seen it over the years where they listen so much that they, they just, they, just butcher themselves and they end up dumbing their game down to the point that it's awful. Oh, well, that's with everything too. Cause I yeah. mean, work and everything, mm. <laughs> they ask you what they, you want at work and you tell them and they're like, yeah, they, just, they just laugh in your face pretty much. But like I said, you never know. Mm -hmm. Somebody might actually pick up that comment or what you comment on or say and run with it. You just never know. Yep. Oh, and the other one was from, heretic which i'm kind of guessing is what it is and he basically said going to have to agree with the general consensus they do these surveys and nothing comes of it but it also goes into that you never know mm -hmm. yeah that's true so i say our peers go fill out the survey mm -hmm. yeah especially when it's early stages because it's the RP is definitely one of those. It, it, we're we're definitely not a high priority in a lot of games, even though they we should, probably should be higher than we tend to get because they'll stick around long after the game has gone sour. Uh, you know, EverQuest. Oh, yeah. A lot of people in uh, Final Fantasy fourteen because I'll, I'll tell you, I just finished up the the last bit of uh, content that they're going to release for the next ten weeks until the next expansion in compared to the 2.0 era of Final Fantasy XIV and what just ended in Heaven's Word. Boy, did that just come out like a just a soggy, wet turd. And it was very <laughs> unsatisfying end to lead into a brand new expansion, especially for a game like that, which is all story-based. The first one, you know, spoiler alert if you haven't finished it, but the, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn are scattered to the wind. Half of them you think are dead. You don't know if any of them have survived. And in this one, it's like, okay, well, everybody's fine, and 
I guess the guy that kind of did stuff is we're going to, he was a douche and he tried to put armies against each other, but I suppose we'll just keep doing what he wanted us to do anyway. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sure. It, it was not nearly as, not nearly as good. I don't know whatever the reason was, but the role players still kicking along because that's not the highlight of the game. I mean, they're bummed about it too, I'm sure, but. They'll they'll still be yeah. there for the next. They've you know while everybody else in the game is like, what do I do for the next two months of content? They're like, let's role play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We should pay yeah. attention to that crowd. So, all right. Well, I'll hit my story up here, and that is congratulations, Lord of the Rings Online, for your tenth anniversary coming up this month. I can't. It's I've I've had an on and off love affair with that game. I I love the role play community there. They're really solid. The game does some really cool stuff, like with the ability to do the music, like actually f make your own songs in that game through the musical instruments in it. And I just never could get into the gameplay in a solid way that that kept me there. But it was always so much fun to dip my head in every now and then. But ten years, it's it's hard to believe it's been that long. But they're gonna have ongoing stuff if you go to their, you know, Lord of the Rings online. If you're you're playing the game, I'm sure you're well aware of this. But they'll have <laughs> Lots of things going on. They don't have everything up that they're going to do, but if you go there, they'll keep you up to date. They're going to have a special 12-hour live stream, which I can't even imagine <laughs> doing that with one of their, uh, what's her name, Jerry uh, Cordovan Snook, and they're going to take a tour down memory lane. That'll be on the 25th of April, and they'll have developers, gameplay, giveaways, things like that. That'll be at their Twitch TV at uh, twitch.tv slash Lord, Lord of the Rings stream, L-O-T-R, L-O-T-R-O. There we go. <laughs> Words, reading, good, fun, stream. So that definitely be worth checking out <laughs> if you're you're still playing in that game or even if you're kind of interested in checking it out. It's it's well worth a game. If you've never played Lord of the Rings online, it's 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 a fun little game. In, I mean, it's not little anymore, but it's it's definitely worth it, but... 10 years so that's that's a no small feat especially with given how many mmos have have sunset well before the decade long mark uh looking at you city of heroes and i know that community's probably gnashing their teeth because they still feel <laughs> still feel backhanded bitch slap for that one yeah i don't blame them and uh the only other piece i have and it's not necessarily rp related but as of the 13th one of my favorite games of all time, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past on the uh, SNES turned 25 years. So that's, wow. that's one of my favorite games of all time. It's, if, it's always in my top five, top three, uh, especially, even as Zelda games go. Uh, I haven't played Breath of the Wild. I don't have a Wii or a Switch, but I've heard great things about that. I, w I would love to get that feeling back, but uh, 25 years ago, a little... Little Ash and Phoenix and sit down and play that game. I don't know how many times I've beaten it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That makes me feel old. Yeah, Very. I know, right? We were, shoot, that was still just, at least for me, I was still in school. I, that was, let's see, how old am I now? I'm 37. <laughs> <laughs> Carry the one. Sometime uh, today. Pie by pie. Uh, at 12. <laughs> I was about 12 or 13 years old, actually. <laughs> But yeah, great game. Love it. So so what you got, Jazz? You're up. Well, I have always had a love affair with sandbox games, although they always end abysmally, and <laughs> I have yet to find one. But I keep my ear out, uh, and I read what I can find on it on a regular basis. Worm Online has been in my sights even before Landmark landed <laughs> because it was – something that was very interesting to me. It looked better than Minecraft and I was really curious if they could pull it off, but it was like beyond rough and <laughs> it's continuing to grow and there's still people, this whole play it before the game is really done thing. I'm over. Um, mm. Yeah. So I'm just that. waiting until they, until Early it's officially, access. yeah, yeah, all that's over with and it's a, fully functioning running game and it has been about a year that it's been in a fully functioning status then i will buy it mm -hmm. i am not doing the other crap ever again yeah um it's just not worth the frustration when it goes 
belly up and they're like, oops, never mind. Mm-hmm. Um, like, mark. You know, mark. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> oh, this game isn't fun anymore. We're not going to do it anymore. Never mind. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh my God. I wanted to just like storm their castle and beat them. I was so angry. I've never been that angry about a game ever in my life. Well, no, that's not true. I was pretty pissed about AOC, but Age of Conan. Yeah. I love that game, and they ruined it systematically so they could go play. What was it? Secret World, I think, that took its place in their focus, uh, if I yeah. remember correctly. Which is now and they never did that. Redone, yeah. <laughs> right, which they never did well to begin with, so I was very, very bitter about Anyway, so Word Online <laughs> looks really, really interesting. It's still a little on the blocky side, and it looks a little bit like a cheaper version of Landmark, but it's coming along, and... I'm interested. I'm watching. The other one that I like is Life is Futile because it looks absolutely earth-wrenchingly horrible <laughs> to, it to play. I, I watched that five-minute thing, the video that yeah. they put out the, for your first, the first five, five hours. hours. Yeah. yeah, that looks I pretty. I was like, it's brutal. It it's just like, looks brutal. Looks like someone took, like, let's see, how can we make Dark Souls a miserable online experience? I know. Yeah. Let's set it in feudal, <laughs> the feudal era and just make you have to live this horrible pioneer life. Yeah, it's but just But somehow it looks make awful. it intriguing and interesting that people will still want to do it. And I think yeah. they kind of did because I'm yeah, curious. Yeah, they've kind of done it. I'm curious. I watch it. I'm, and they also, I think it because it's also interesting to me because unlike a lot of games, it has two versions of itself, both of which are getting attention. Um, it has the MMO version and then it has the your own game version um at the same time and they're kind of going off of uh minecraft in that and then mm -hmm. i think that was smart i think they're following a trend and i'm interested to see if they can pull it off again it's not where it needs to be uh the mmo is only in beta and until it's you know fully functioning game i'm not going to buy it but i really like what i see i really like what i hear and uh <laughs> god damn it dogs <laughs> <laughs> so your turn you take it i'll be right back <laughs> yeah i see a couple people are having a problem with the stream i don't know what's causing that we're we're, we're running pretty solid here but yeah, i don't know if it's on twitch's and or ours but given we almost never have problems with our connection here like <laughs> we're in a great area i'm just gonna have to brag on was it uh Cox uh, Cox Communication, they do really good where we're at. It's like a solid 90 megabytes here. So I'm not sure why you guys are having a problem. I apologize for I, that. I just blamed you on the general chat. Yeah, I see that. It's Ashen's fault. It's always his fault. Ashen's fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So Dogs and children buzzled. I am back. Okay, welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back. But uh, all right. So, did you, did you have anything to follow up with that, Jess? Since you before your dog so <laughs> rudely interrupted you. Uh, no, I think that was basic. Those are those are the two big things that I've been watching. Those two games, and I was really pleased to see they came out with the first five hours thing, which mm -hmm. was fascinating. And then there's another one farther down that that goes into the the now version of it, the closed version for yourself. So. Yeah, I'm really pleased to see that that's coming along, and I look forward to seeing more. Yeah. It has uh, a lot of RP potential. Yeah. Sandboxes are, are a better place for RPers, usually, because you can build your own world, and you can build your own situations, and then many times have your own server with just the people that you like on it. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of possibility for that. Yeah, yeah, there was, yeah, and switching, there was, was it, yeah, it was Life is Feudal, where they actually went between, they actually uh, could go between the like a sixty-four person server or the like typical like massive MMO thing where it's you know yes thousands of people instead. Which if especially if you could switch between that, that'd be pretty that'd be pretty neat. That was one thing yeah. was at uh, Star Wars Galaxies. They didn't do they was all in you know just giant open world stuff uh, on each planet, but then people building their own towns and cities you know was great until of course then. The player base started to drop off, and they were all ghost towns and cities. But <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of went that way. But you know, if they can find a, a good way to do that and find a way to to keep it from 
like just trailing off and you just end up with the uh, big empty areas of you know derelict buildings and stuff like that that'd be a good good thing to try hopefully it works out for yeah that. i hope so all right so all right so before we get into our main topic we'll have a our advertisement i've realized uh what most people would call consider common sense is stopping in the middle of your topic to do a fun advertisement thing is probably always not the best uh, way to go about something. It's nice to keep that flow going, and uh, even better than that is then talking about it afterwards, like uh, well, this right here, actually, is probably very, very unprofessional. It's just shameful. But. <laughs> <laughs> we're new. We're mm -hmm. learning. <clears throat> yeah, we're learning. It's a learning experience, which is why we're more than happy to have... Uh, audience interaction and things like that so and... all right so today our advertisement will be illegal beasts and where to find them mm -hmm. not a ripoff whatsoever <laughs> don't flag us so okay here's how it's gonna go today i'm announcing that this easter holiday i have traveled to a universe far far away and made it back in one piece i mean you know mostly but uh anywho I'm here to bring you those hard-to-get exotic, quote-unquote, if you know what I mean, animals that you just can't get enough of. Yeah, that's right. We have uh, the the Vaughn tigers, the Nexus, the the uh, the, the Sifrips. You, you know, you know what they is. Uh, so many more of those wonderful beasts that makes ec every uh, excellent holiday monster. Yeah, I mean not monster, <laughs> no, monster uh, pets is what I was meaning to say. Just you know, pets. Uh, so, uh, yeah, oh, sure, sure, sure. You can get them boring little chitlick things that the, the tiny pocket size little fuzzy love monsters, but uh, or the or the loth cats, they're, they're, they're cute, but who doesn't have one of them? But they just crap in your house, they make a mess, they think you're better than they think you're better than me, they think they think they're better than me, they're not better than me, I'm better than me, I'm better than them, stupid cats. You know, you want something that both your kids can wrestle. And also maybe uh, eat an intruder. Ow! Hey! 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 The, the, you know, I got I got a good deal on them. And uh, the take back. No. No. We don't bite. Hey. Look at me. We don't bite. All right. That's what I thought. Better back down. Any, anyway. Hey. Uh, this, <coughs> yeah. Could you? Uh, hey. Could you get? Uh, hey. <laughs> Get, get that baby raid back in its pen. Yeah, they don't belong out here. I'm doing a commercial here. How are we supposed to sell this crap? I mean, these things. I mean, these that's wonderful product. If you keep letting them out of the pens. So, jeez. So hard, hard, hard. Hey! So, come on down. Uh, we'll throw in a free chew toy of your choice. You know, pick up a gel resin figurine of that uh, Jedi Satil Chan chick. That uh, really angry looking dude with the, the bad haircut. Darth Malgus. The... Uh, we I don't even know what what's an HK an HK fifty one what is that I don't even know okay whatever and our fan favorite random Ewok because people always like to watch them get chewed on I don't know it's, it's you you people are sick all guaranteed to last until your little bundle of toothy joy gets a hold of them and uh, hey hey no okay I gotta make okay I gotta make this fast but uh, come on down to not shot lower level in the dark alley just beyond the landing zone to the right near the corner of get off of that get off down okay it in a street and uh, pick up your lovable little tear today you know your kids and wife will absolutely would you would you stop that your kids and wife will absolutely love you for it or if you know you're trying to get rid of your kids and wife also a very high probability a I'm just saying we don't judge and no 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 look okay hey look for the sign this is illegal beast we're too it's loose get the stunt get this get the stunner okay fine you know what find them if you you know, okay you can't live with that okay, would you would stop down and you can't live without them. Uh, coming to a planet soon. You uh, coming to a planet near you on account of we can't stay here for too long. Yeah, and uh, each visitor must sign a waiver before entering. Ironic, I know, given that with the bad next thing. Bad. Huh. Okay, so they're not all winners. <laughs> and you slapping the crap out of that desk, boy, is that really loud? <laughs> <laughs> good job that was fantastic yeah. so alright enough of that silliness enough of that 
I don't get to do Italian mafia accents nearly enough. Not that I would know anything about that. They're all fantastic people there at the mafia, and they don't exist. <clears throat> I think you did fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Game levels versus RP strength. Uh, this actually, we, we threw this out there just out of curiosity to see if anybody had something that they want to talk to. We actually got a, a few suggestions, and uh, one of them we'll save till later when it gets closer to uh, that game coming out. And so this one's brought to her by our friend and listener who has been Natish Tina and is his uh, Razor Edge 2K9 in the general chat stuff. So we appreciate you, Razor giving us this idea it will be game levels so leveling up through the game itself versus what your role play character strength is and does one really matter without the 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 other you know can you can you just go off of pure game levels or does you have to take into account does you have to does you have to do you have to take into account uh you know what what the person's intended their character to be which We'll we'll get more into that, and uh, of course, firstly, changes from game to game. Um, some games have like the slash. We're going to I call it slash duel because that's what it was in EverQuest, and that's what it is. In many of them, it may not be an actual slash. Sometimes it's, it's a reticle, and you duel them. But that's basically dueling another character using your armor, your actual skills, the game mechanics that come with that, as opposed to the uh, RP dueling, which would be just typing out what you're doing and you know, slapping each other with words, yeah, and you maybe using the slash random, um, you know, things like in FF14, they've got an area for one, the slash duel, but it's only on like a designated spot, which not the most convenient thing when you get into a fight and somebody in a bar halfway across the world and like, all right, let's take this outside down the street uh, over an ocean and to this one dock, which is the only place we can actually do a PVP kind of <laughs> <laughs> kind of duel yeah it's not the most thing but uh so what you guys got uh what, what do you guys think on this one it's you know i i know what i think but let's let's hear what hear what, hear what you think because i know there's lots and lots of different people on this there there's it's always shifts from person to person what what someone thinks is more important than the other well i have two opinions mm -hmm. um because there's my opinion as a guild leader and then there's my personal opinion um as a guild leader i have to find a happy medium between the sides and they often are either all one way or all the other and you always have people who want to be all the power but you know <laughs> be level two and then you have the people who have nothing else to do with their time 24 7 except play the game and they are maxed out raid armor and the best of everything and roar and they're badass because of their and it is not often there's not as much of a story around it they just say that they're badass because they killed x y and z in a game yeah mm -hmm. so those two schools do not like each other and a lot of people fall in between those two I personally, as myself, believe that you should be able to roleplay whatever level of the character you can pull off. Um, the caveat to that is that if you don't know the lore, and you don't know the game, and you don't know really how to roleplay, you're going to run into a serious problem with god modding, metagaming, and, and just generally being a douche in the process of trying to be mm -hmm. this big, strong person. And yeah. leveling at least gives you that, well, I'm maxed out level, so I can get away with this. Or at least working um, on it, yeah, even if you're right. not there, yeah. I yeah. personally have found that people who play the game with their characters and are slowly leveling up tend to be less inclined to say, I have the power, than people who are level two, don't really play the game, they're just there to role play, and they always want to be this mega super duper uber bad guy the uh, with no flaws. And, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and they're level two and, and they don't understand why a large majority of people, even people who normally wouldn't dismiss them, will dismiss them simply yeah. because they, you can, I mean, let's be honest, in most games you can get to level 30 in almost no time Less, yeah, invested well, whatsoever. Yeah, a handful of weeks. I think I'm, I, what did I start, uh, how many episodes was it? I started in ESL. Uh, I 
um, level 50 and well into the 60s and 70s of that. I don't, it's been so fast. I don't even know what they're called. The combat points. Is that it? Yeah. Champion points. Champion points. Yeah. I'm like into 70 levels of that. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I I leveled. Yeah. I played limitedly and I got to max and then 160 in about a month and a half Mm -hmm. of just casual play. So it doesn't take long. It does take a little bit. It takes some effort. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. So if you're just logging into the game and playing a level five and you have the power, you are a 500 year old vampire. Fear me. I think there's some justification in people going, oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And it's typically when it's especially, I mean, and we understand we're going, we're talking in generalities here. And that is an extreme view. Very, very few role players that aren't like you know, green off the, you know, green out and fresh off the presses of, of giving it a try for their first time. Typically don't do that. And a lot of times when it does happen, it's just, it, it's not always the most positive first role play experience because it will be literally a room full of people all being like, listen, dude, uh, you got to step back. You're nobody's buying, you know, what you're selling. And well, so, it's, it's you also know. like, yeah, like I told somebody one time who was role playing this really, really old character but had only been in the game for about six months Mm -hmm. and had no real understanding of the lore of the game. And so they were saying that they were for EQ2, that they were a 10,000 year old vampire. (laughs) Yeah. And I had to very gently set them down and say, look, I understand this is your role playing. This is what you really want to do. But vampires have only existed for less than 2000 years. Dark elves have only existed for less than 2000 years. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no way that your character can be a dark elf vampire or no, it was a, it was a human vampire and be any more than about a thousand years old. Yeah. That's the max. You can't tell me what to role play. Well, actually when it comes to, uh, yeah, you're actually, right. I can't, I, but, I the, you, but it goes in this guild, I can lore. have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the thing with the game. Yeah. Right. If you want to play something, that's you, but many guilds are going to say, well, you can do that if you want to, but not here. Yeah. 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 And well, that's perfectly and- okay. Yeah, That's it's, 100% it'd be, okay. be like somebody going into Final Fantasy fourteen and trying to play a lichen and a werewolf. It's you know, or a werewolf lichen or a vampire. Or, they don't exist in Final Fantasy. I mean, they do in in some of the games. Like you know, there was Vincent in Final Fantasy seven, which was kind of <laughs> vampiric. But in fourteen, they don't exist. You, you just it's you, you're just gonna be looked at like a crazy person, you know? Yeah. But and uh, that's. That's, so, that's the important thing is by playing the game, you learn some of those things just yeah. in the process. And I think that's part of the reason why when you're level two and you're playing this super duper uber person. And mind you, I've met some people that can do it. And yeah. I, I've i seen people be like yeah, and totally we're not talking, okay with it. We're not talking alts here because obviously if you have an alt, you're probably already well aware of everything. This, you know, and yeah. you've probably got your established group of friends and things like that. And you know that they, they're going to play along with your character because you probably if you're doing an alt for something like that you've probably cuz I've done that you and you and I have done that both oh, yeah. jazz for uh specific uh, well, uh we, events and storylines yeah. we create like a le- a character level it up to you know enough to that we can get out in the world and then that's our big bad monster for like a guild right. and yes so, and, but we yeah we have an that's, understanding yeah. that's an understanding you have, when you come in fresh and you're trying to get into like random rp or and things like that it's really not that hard and it, it and it's maybe it's not fair it isn't but you know it also there has to be a there there's a balance like i said before you know and and What's funny is there's the the two lines of thought of, yes, it's important. No, it's not important. Tends to be uh, when you don't really think it out or you're not a guild leader or you're just out and about. It tends to be the one with the higher level thinks that it should only be the levels that matter and the one with the lower level thinks that it's only what I wrote about my character and have in mind that should matter. Exactly. I have actually (laughs) seen that. I've seen people flip where Mm -hmm. first, when Mm -hmm. they first start, they're, I have the power on the level two. And then they level up their character eventually and they get to level 100 and then no one should be able to do this that they did when they first started and it's like but that's what you did well that's different no actually it's exactly the <laughs> yeah. same thing well so yeah. and then they get like <laughs> and there's the one sitting at a tablet at level you know 100 and this level two is like you know i'm better than you are and they're like no no you're not holy crap and and it's what it's it's being completely if, if you don't at that point realize oh so that's why everybody wasn't taking me too seriously you need to probably start you know maybe doing a little introspection on 
<laughs> yeah, like that. exactly. I mean, because I have absolutely no problem. I, I knew a gentleman that, you know, he worked like 60 hours a week and still wanted to role play and his character was yeah. like level 20. And it was probably never going to get beyond level 20. But he played a very bad. And I don't think anybody had a problem with him. But he didn't God mod. He, mm -hmm. And that's know, a big deal, he, too. Yeah, and he explained that I don't have time to level, but I do want to role play. And he never used it in such a way that you resented the fact that he was this level 20 that was actually this big, powerful person. Mm -hmm. But again, it comes down to discussion, uh, talking to people about the situation, explaining, and not taking it so seriously that there's going to be some people that are going to go, uh-huh, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, and that happens in, in every aspect of role play. You've You've... There's always elitists. There's always, you know, and I know we probably come off that way sometimes here, but honestly, when it comes to the actual people, that's because we're doing a show about it. So we've pretty much got to, you know, we're here because we think our opinions are right. Who would have thought someone would do a show based on something where they think they're in the right of things? <laughs> but we also do it with full understanding that there's usually, there's many facets of a thing like this. But Oh, yeah, there's always exceptions yeah. to the there's rule, always exceptions But overall, to I would mm. say that, at least if you roll a character that you want to play big and bad, you should at least invest some time in leveling that character so yeah. that it looks like you give a damn about the RP. Right. And not and just... And it, and it goes back to another topic we had, which was learning lore. If, you, if you're going to do that, you need to know that you can't be the 10,000-year-old vampire because they haven't even existed that long. Or that, I think in the, war, in the, the aspects of Norath, I don't even think the world of Norath was technically that old at that point actually it was but they were it was, very they were limited like, they were, yeah it was like one race of people i think at the time i mean it was yeah, one or two and they yeah. like used sticks and didn't have wheels and you know yeah. they were pretty backwards so oh thag thag thinks yeah. that's good <laughs> dragon bird but yeah there you go that was like the existence of it so yeah. it was but yeah, and it it's, was always really hard when people did yeah. that and they just didn't understand. Or like when we would get into discussions about um, the dark elf culture mm -hmm. and that people would insist that they've drow. been around for. Yeah, that's the, they're not that's drow. That's one thing everybody needs to learn in all MMOs, unless you're playing a Neverwinter Nights MMO, which I, I know they have that one out there. I really don't know how the role, if there's role play in that one, though, because it's, all, there it's is. largely there on console, be. which... I know that's not the easiest place to role play through, <laughs> but uh, you know, and except with the exception of that game, dark elves aren't drow. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's, let's... and it's very important to understand the difference. Very, and I always different. ran into that a lot because, like, EQ was based on D and D, but they had some very mm -hmm. well, they, they had to because way. otherwise they got yeah, because then they could get slammed. Just for... like Elder Scrolls, <laughs> right. you know, their their dark <laughs> yeah. elves are nothing like drow. They're not a they're not a matriarchal society. They're barely, you know, they're barely a anything. Society, if anything, yeah. Depending, and of course, it depends <laughs> on what time frame you're in. If you go in those, well, yes. But for ESO, they're, you know, it'll. I'm curious to see with that with Morrowind what they come out with story wise to, to kind of I know uh, that, extend on that stuff too. Yeah, part of the confusion, of course, in EQ in particular, was because people used the Drow language, which was a developed language that some wonderful person made up a long time ago, mm -hmm. and took the Elven language and twisted it and turned it into the Starkov language, and you could look it up and say phrases, and it was cool. But they thought that because you were using the language, that that meant that, that you were using yeah. the cultural rules, and it wasn't. And there was no comparison between Drow. and But yet, you ran into, and I would say... At least half of the people playing Dark Elves role-played them as being part of a drow society mm -hmm. with dominant females and that whole thing. And that simply didn't exist in Egypt. Mm -mm. No. Ever. No, no and... they, they had a king. <laughs> There, I mean, yeah. there, at the time of EQ2, there was a queen, but but anyway, so we're, we're and she was a manipulative piece of work, but yeah. she wasn't in charge, and that was important to understand. Yeah. And the uh, so the other other than leveling, the other thing because there's there's two there's two kinds of strength here. There's the in-game strength that you get through mechanics, and then there's the RP strength of a character. And uh, while the game strength you really can't you know you can't deny mechanically, um, you know you can kind of brush it off or push it aside. But the like with everything in role play, the strength of your character is really you can write in whatever you want. But if the people around you don't buy into it or uh, roll with it 
you've got nothing. You know, I, I you can mm-hmm. you can write yourself as as anything you want, but this is a it's basically you better be able to sell it yeah you've got to be able to sell it and that right there that is Mm -hmm. the most important thing i think whether you're level two or you're max level if you can't sell it Mm -hmm. for what you're role playing it's gonna fall flat on its face and then you know you're gonna people are gonna roll their eyes at you and that's really hard to take when you're role playing and it's important i think to me as a guild leader and as a role player that I always told people, it's okay to play a you know raw character. Just remember that for every strength, there's a weakness, mm-hmm. and yeah. all creatures, great and small, have balance. So if you have what did what did it say in Aladdin? Um, awesome powers, oh, yeah, incredible, incredible, you know, <laughs> un- unlimited yeah. cosmic power, itty bitty living space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. that kind of epitomizes yeah. what makes people believe in villains because they have to have. Everybody, all characters have to have positive. Yeah, because it, in, in no matter, even if you do that, you're still going to have the, oh, he's nothing to me guy, you know, but. Oh, yeah, always. That's, but that's, that's almost the reverse of yeah. uh, playing the Usum character is that you'll have people who are like, I'm scared of nothing. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what you do. They've decided that their character is immune and is never afraid. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when you step into God modding. Yeah. Yeah, and because that. it's a form of God modding, really. If you're yeah. saying. That, you're, that the character that you're talking about is not fearsome. And the person is saying, well, you know, they do X, Y, and Z. When you when you come to them, you get this sense of this. They're like, well, you can't tell me what my character thinks. Well, no, but they're telling you what you're observing. Mm-hmm. Now, how your character mm-hmm. reacts to that is, is on you. Yeah. But to just dismiss it because you've decided that nobody is scarier than you are is a form of god bonding and can really damage role play. Yeah, and it, it it that's one of those things, you know. Uh, I, I mean, maybe I was I could be off, but my reputation on in EQ two as Xanus, I built that up over a period of years. You know, it started out small where he was he was, you know, I always had an idea of where I wanted to go, and of course he evolved greatly. But to get to the point where uh, people <laughs> like, oh my gosh, uh, Nilok, <laughs> yeah, our, our good yeah. boy Nilok, you know, where he him and people like him you know he would <clears throat> he was totally cool and he he i could not have done what i did on xanus without his permission to allow me to yeah. and because of that it made xanus's reputation that much better when he would you know whenever that character of his would act up or do something into his character what his character would do he was kind of he was the he was the first transformers fan he was the star scream of our <laughs> of our little guild where he was kind of a sniveling little turd but he was always trying to undermine you behind the scenes yes uh, and he point. was a thug and he yeah, was he, a, a kind but, of reminded me of a mafia <clears throat> kingpin in yeah and he was and, and i say this with love because too because he was he was so much fun he was a great piece of shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, <really was. laughs> he played this amazingly complicated yeah, dark especially at his age because he was a pretty young guy at the time which uh, none of us knew mm-hmm. um, he was actually a kid when he joined he lied he's a lying liar but he was mature enough that he passed yes it off. he pulled it off he but he it also off. none of us knew he gave you know because of of him i had was able to build a rip him and people like him but you know when we would get into fights you know we, he was I, his my character got enough angry enough that he picked him up by the throat and literally dropped him off a ten story tower. And I mean, of course, he was he was a lot more powerful too, and he survived. But he he didn't walk away harmless, you know, unharmed. But he allowed things like that to happen. He allowed me to do things like that. And and, and then of course, in the reverse, so did I with other characters. And that's what yes. you have and... to do. You have to build up that reputation and yes. that perception. Because the perception, yes. you know, in, especially in this this world, perception is literally reality. Because without yes. that, you've got nothing. It is. It's true. And you got to remember too. After that, Nylock never went on a ledge with him ever again. No, he never went. It. No. <laughs> no, they. Strangely enough, all their conversations took took place on level ground, nowhere near any tall buildings or cliffs. Yes, and I love that touch because it was just this little tiny thing that mm-hmm. somebody just coming in wouldn't understand why he said, and he doesn't turn his back to him, but leans on the wall because that's never happening again. Yeah, and people are like, exactly. what never happens again? Long story. In, it's just joke. funny to us. But, yeah, but you know that's. <laughs> That's the, the for your character to have your you know what you write and what you what you envision as you have to like like uh, Sib said you have to sell it you're you're basically yeah. selling 
your thoughts and ideas out to other people. And if it's so far on beyond both like, uh, you know, beyond lore and things like that, or even, you know, if you're, was, you know, if your, your level just doesn't kind of coincide with that, it, it doesn't, you, you can't go anywhere and you're not going to get taken too seriously. Now, and I'm, and again, this is extremes and it's very rare. This is largely for kind of newer people, but there's plenty of old people that have been role playing for a long time that don't understand that they're doing these kinds of things and they just want to. And I understand that we all want to. We we get that I you know we have this great idea for a character we want to get it out there and we want it as soon as we can. But unfortunately, you've got to build that up. Can I jump in right there too? Sure. I know when you're in a guild and uh, they usually have the forums that you can go to writing stories. I know you may not. I, I'm not really good at first writing stories but then i kind of got better but getting even like little short stories about your character on the forums about uh things they've done things they've gone through it also helps people take you you know a little bit more serious on how badass you are if you are writing you know where they can read it Mm -hmm. or introducing your character that way it's just an idea. Yeah, and it's in a more controlled. Yeah, like it's it's in a controlled, more controlled environment. Because, but at least gives people the perception again. And even that, don't go. I mean, don't go over the top. But, uh, like this week, I I wrote it for the well, first time in forever. I wrote something of just uh my character doing one of his Dark Brotherhood assassinations and things like that. And you know, obviously he's gonna win because there's no there's no slash random rolling. You know, the fight the fight's gonna go how I decide that it will. But it also gives people, you know, anybody that reads that they'll understand. Okay, so he's he's not a very friendly person, and he works exactly. He's he's an assassin. He does what he's supposed to do. And obviously, <clears throat> that's one of those other things. It's it's a little hard to play. Char- you know, you. You can't kill other people's role play characters, so that's really one of the only places you can do that. But at least they mm-hmm. know in the background, like you said, that it it's there and it helps build that reputation. It's actually a very forums are, and also tw- uh, what's the, the other thing that I've seen people uh, Tumblr. Apparently, I've I honestly until I got to Final Fantasy fourteen, I'd not realized that a lot of role players are using Tumblr accounts to keep track of their character. I I personally don't care too much but you I mean you've really got to be I'd have to be tied to that character like crazy and frankly at this point I've moved around way too much to to do that it would be just a waste but there is an entire role play community thing going on Tumblr where outside the game they'll they'll play like that and role play back and forth cuz it's it's a you know like a blog sort of a thing back and forth but it also it's another place that will help build up that reputation so that when of course you're in the game it's it's kind of already being built up again, uh, even more so. But it's I know I did that with nine in uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. Mm-hmm. I brought her in. I had switched over from Sib to her, and I wanted her to be a badass. And it's not really how I play, but I started writing stories about it. And to me, once I started to develop her. I felt more confident about approaching people, you know, mm-hmm. and doing duels and actual uh, being more comfortable with yeah. the character in your own headspace. Yeah, I don't think she was maxed out when I first started doing that. I mean, mm, I don't I, think so. I've started to kind of not max out my characters and just, you know, what happens happens. Yeah, you know. Well, and you also, you know, a lot of the characters you play, and that's the thing too. A lot of this. You don't have it. It typically only comes up if there's either a, a fight coming or, uh, you know, you you guys are just button heads like crazy. Which for for usual conversations, you know, like just like in real life, day to day conversations, I don't need to worry if I can actually beat the crap out of the guy I'm having a discussion with. It's probably not going to matter. Uh, but in in this, it's it's really typically comes up a lot more with combat and things like that. But it still mm-hmm. doesn't hurt because there is. And it's not always fair, but some people, they really do see, like, when somebody's coming in and they're role-playing and they're only, like, level one or two, they they don't take them seriously at all, which that is the opposite end of that, especially when somebody's just, like, uh, they're just in there having a conversation or they're serving drinks or something like that, and you see that level, 
you know, five character, and they're like, oh, you know, I can push this guy around, which that's not cool either. You know, you, you shouldn't be shouldn't be doing that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So you know, and it kind of work. It it does work both ways on that. You've 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 got to give and take. You know, if you want people to respect what you've written, you've also kind of have to do the same in return. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, you can't complain too much when nobody's doing that. Um, the other thing is, of course, when it comes to this stuff, is even when you do your character, you've you've got to be willing and able to lose. You know, you, you, nobody wins them all. Ask, you know, ask, uh, was it Ronda Rowdy? <laughs> yeah. You can't yeah. win forever, you know, or, you know, Mike Tyson, any fighter, any football team, any baseball team, any, any, anything, you don't win forever. And you've got to, you've got to be able to lose, you know, even, even in, uh, you know, made up things, you know, if you go with the crazy Dragon Ball Z and anime things, those guys get their ass kicked for a long yeah. time before they end up going super saiyan or whatever like that yeah. you know you've yeah. you've got to be it's it's boring frankly if your character does nothing but wind even there there's what's that anime that our boy our son started watching uh one punch man this man yeah. can literally win any fight with a single punch it doesn't seem like that's a great way to tell a story, but of course he has to land that punch and the people he's going up to are just as crazy as he is, which is where all the interactions and, and the fun come of it. But, uh, you know, even he gets his, has to get his ass kicked sometimes because otherwise, you know, it'd be a pretty boring story if like every, he just goes around flicking people in the forehead and they, they fall down. That's, that's what builds your character is being able to lose. So even if you've got the, you know, your level, level 100 and you've got the maxed out gear and maxed out stats and you almost literally can't be beaten in if if somebody's doing slash duels against you if it does happen man roll with it don't don't make excuses don't don't puss out and be oh i my cat was on the keyboard and i tripped over my dog who was eating my goldfish and my children are on fire gotta go bye yeah, it's, it's just just yeah. up. Yeah. You know, you gotta. I think it builds yeah, char- it Losing builds character. Oh, <gasps> just like in real life. Yeah, just in real life. I think that also the people who are very very good with PvP and who are very very good in gear and da 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 tend to be more dismissive in role play of people who see themselves as powerful um, and can role play it and and can convince people duel. They're nothing, mm-hmm. and that always bothers me because yeah. it's it's a form of god mining because mechanics mm-hmm. and being good at those mechanics doesn't make you a role player, right? And, mm-hmm. and that's why when I, in my guild, a lot of times I would say, you know, we're going to duel today in RP. Yeah, and, and then we at, also had, OOC and then at the end of it, where, we would, yeah. yeah, and then at the end of have it, have fun with, yeah, do the mechanic one. We I would do that because I love personally, I love both. I, I and I almost always and this is just a personal thing, I always leave it up to the other guy. And if they can't decide, I'll be like, All right, we'll just you know we'll what if it's if I'll I'll just base it off, you know, try to be as neutral as I can if we're both close to it. But if I'm twenty levels above the guy, I'm gonna let's let's go ahead and do an RP duel because I'm gonna whoop your ass and there's not gonna be any challenge to that whatever. And unless of course and again, this is a fluid thing, like all role play is, unless of course that's how it's supposed to go. Because sometimes, right. you know, if the master and apprentice thing, the apprentice more than likely is going to end up losing, but not always. There was uh, uh, a gal that my character had trained back a long time ago, Vinka, and when she started, yeah, she lost all the time. But as it, things progressed in our role play, she got on that level and she started being, you know, holding her own and. It, you know, but that's it formed naturally and that's exactly yeah. how it was you know and however it ended that's how it ended you know if if she mm-hmm. won she won yeah. if i lost i lost if i won you know that was all all good <clears throat> yeah that uh is it's one of those things that is probably always going to be debated mm-hmm. um yeah. you're always going to have people who are like well i work hard for my armor and i spend the time and it's not my fault you don't bother to and it's like or i have a life and can't Right. But at the same time, I get that they spend a lot of time doing it. Yeah, and it is I, something you can respect, but you've also it's 
you just have to be willing to, you know, it's it's a communication thing. You've got to be, yeah. you know, don't don't get into the fight. If on and that goes for, you know, if if you're the if you're the scrub and you're going and you're pushing the buttons of this guy that you know, you know, that's level one hundred and does all that stuff, but you also know that he only like he only slash dual PVPs, and he's made that abundantly aware that if you want to pick a fight with him, that's how you're gonna have to end it. Maybe don't pick a fight with that guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. you know, you know, you you know if you know this in advance, and I've seen it happen plenty of times. You knew full well in advance because I I did it. I mean, uh, of course, I was I was more than happy to duel them because <laughs> that's what I was very going good. for. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was prepared for it. And then they were sometimes I was the one that when I win, they're like, "That wasn't supposed to happen." I was like, "Well, it just did." <laughs> Wipe his feet, <laughs> you know. But you know, if you know if you know ahead of time that the person you're you're you know you're poking the bear and you know this bear only uses game mechanics, but you're unwilling yes. to do that, that's it comes to a screeching halt, and then there's another half hour of uh, you take you've basically pulled the entire area out of role play and into an OOC argument over levels, and I've seen it happen plenty of times, and it's funny because mm-hmm. it happened you know 10 years ago in in EverQuest 2 at the you know at the beginning of that and it still happens today in games I've 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 been passing by and been like oh no that argument <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody was poking Always. the bear and they're not willing to either and one of the others not willing to you know either role play or duel the way the other one wants to and now they're at a standstill and where do they go from here and typically it will go with the you're not worth my time anyway and yep. they both Always. walk off pissed off and on you know, slash ignore. Yeah, because so. I like, as as Vodka, you remember, because she was the big badass in the guild, but Triton could always kick her butt. I sucked at PvP and mm-hmm. did really well in AOC, but man, an assassin, you know they were squishy for a long they time. They were very squishy, yeah. Unless you could sneak up behind someone and stealth. <laughs> you were dead. Yeah, which so, is why I started using those potions that allowed me to see invisibility in duels. <laughs> see, I, yeah. I never really actually dueled. I always did it out, uh, in character. Slash. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, often... I, can't, I always play a healer. <laughs> and I'm not saying that healers don't duel well, but I don't do well, oh. duel well as a healer. I always got my butt kicked. And so I, I just don't do the duels. Yeah. I would rather do it out of or in character. Well, yeah. I always felt I just explained it that Bach is an assassin. It makes sense that face to face she's not going to do in very a street well. brawl. She's yeah. gonna yeah yeah because she's right there, sneak up behind you. But every now and then I would get lucky, and I would stun him at just that right moment, and I'd be able to get behind him, and it was over. Mm-hmm. Like, and it was over fast, though. but you'd have to be yeah. Able, yeah. But I had to be able to do that, and if I could do that, I was dead. And I only got a couple people that way a couple of times. They figured it out and started stunning mm-hmm. the crap out of me, and I was dead in thirty seconds. So, <laughs> yeah. and I, I, See, I, I just kept myself alive forever. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I think if, <laughs> that's I think what if, I did. I was just like, I'm not dying. If two I healers are going to slash rap. duel, I, I'm saying they should be required by law to only random and RP mm. duel because oh that my is, god, there yeah. is nothing more boring than watching two people smack each other twice and then heal for the next ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's the worst <laughs> duel yeah, just, ever. Just, oh my god! Make a sandwich, come back. I'll probably mm-hmm. still be doing it. Yeah. Oh look, it's it basically at that point, it's not a duel. It's a who's gonna run out of magic first, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which Pretty takes much. time because regeneration in games is insane these days. But uh, so yes, I mean basically we're we're I think we're all pretty much in agreement. I mean it is situational, but the the levels do matter to a certain point i mean you do you know it's 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 multi-layered like a lot of things are but if somebody's done the work you can at least respect them for having done the levels and things like that and uh you know if 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 they're playing a strong character at least they can actually back it up but uh you know if you're going to come in as level one scrub lord and you know at the beginning armor and you know, you have the strength of Super Saiyan 17 Goku, Sephiroth, a vampire, werewolf, <laughs> dragon god. You know, you're not going to be taken seriously. But if you go in there at that level, you know, and you're, you know, you push buttons. But you're also willing to, you know, if you're willing to lose, then by all, you know, that's the thing. Is you you just really, in the end of it, you just have to be able to roll with the punches. Like, in all, yeah. role, free it's free-form writing, free-form role. Well, play. it also comes to... Like, I have a friend of mine that fights for a living. 
and he's not a role player, but I get a lot of my fighting mechanics from him when I write. Mm -hmm. And I'll often give them to him to look at so that he can see if I'm doing it right. Because obviously I'm not a fighter. I've watched tons of fights, but I don't, I don't. So when you're writing something you don't know, you check. And one of the things that he told me when I was, I poked his brain about this whole issue is he was like, here, because and it, it boils down to also like rolling dice. If you're a mega guy and you're rolling with this guy and he rolls better than you and ends up kicking your ass, a lot of people are like, that's not fair because mm -hmm. I've done this, 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 and he's this big badass. This is little scrub and he just kicked his ass. And my friend told me, he was like, you know, you can go as a champion into a match mm -hmm. and a guy gets one lucky hit and you're, you're out. out. And you yeah. lose. And it doesn't matter that you won three championships. This guy got a lucky punch and mm -hmm. broke your collarbone and you're yeah. done. You didn't duck you, <laughs> you didn't duck like you should have and you found out you had out. a glass jaw. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so he says anything can happen in a fight. And he says and then you throw in knives and, and you know, and weapons, or dirty, yeah. you know, weapons. He's like, You're talking about a chance encounter. He says dice actually makes a lot of sense because it does come down to random. No matter how good you are, you can make a mistake. You're yeah. tired. You had too much coffee. Environmental somebody factors. Farted. Yeah. <laughs> somebody farted off on the left hand side. You looked at the wrong moment. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's all kinds of things that can happen. Yeah. If Juan the rice, <laughs> it's the the butterfly effect. That if was Juan, awesome. Juan the rice farmer farts in China and creates a hurricane and, and then yeah. putters out, but makes it so that that cat sneezes. And distracts you as you're throwing the punch. Uh, right. right. So that was awesome. I, yeah, thank you. I, I stopped really getting upset about it, and I started using that analogy a lot. And mm -hmm. I found that a lot of people, even PVPers and people who raid, were like, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And it kind it of really stopped is. a lot of the argument that, you know, random being random, you never know how it's going to go. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. why I like dice. And, and so, that... And you guys talking about the guilds earlier, you know, it is nice to have a guild that will do the uh, RP dueling. And then afterwards, you know, if people mm -hmm. want to actually do the dueling, yeah. you know, that's nice. Because it's always good to learn, too, especially yeah. in a friendly yeah, environment. We that's all, why we, we did had, it all the time. Yeah, yeah we had PvP training sessions, essentially, <laughs> so that people who would be afraid to PvP normally, they're going to PvP with someone who's not just trying to kick their ass. Like Triton, mm -hmm. he would take off all his armor, yeah. <laughs> and he would take off all his weapons. He'd be basically naked underneath his costume armor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, come at me. Give me the hardest. And he wouldn't do anything. He'd cancel all his buffs, and he'd just sit there and whack at you with his pinky and try not to kill you. And mm -hmm. while you worked at the mechanics of PvP, because yeah. it's hard. Yeah. And I helped a lot of people. We would go, uh, uh, you know. Uh, Triton and Tilder, all them. We would we would do that stuff, and we would go back and forth, and we would be like, okay, 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 all right, I'm gonna try this, you know, and try to counteract each other, and see, you know, and sometimes, you know, given game mechanics, you just there's just it doesn't matter. Some classes yeah. are just better at beating it. <laughs> you know, it's the it's the Pokemon thing. You know, one one class is better at beating this class. That class can take this class, and that class can take the first class. You know, that triangle or yeah. the circle. The circle of life. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, like Triton said, the only people that could beat him were you mm -hmm. and Dragger and another Shadow Knight. Yeah. Because and it, and it wasn't always either. And it wasn't no, and it wasn't consistent. But if anybody back could beat him when he was in his great armor and he was raw, you could do it. You could stun him more and keep him from doing his big hits. Say with Gregor, or Gregor, like one time was out of stuns, and so he just grabbed him, started dragging him before they got rid of dragon PvP, and you couldn't do that. He drug him like halfway across the ring. We were laughing; it was so funny because there was nothing Triton could do. And but there's always going to be, like you said, that that one class that you can't really find. <laughs> but we all practiced and we learned that that was what was most important. Yeah, yeah. It took the and fear I'm... out of PvP. Thanks a lot for that, Cersei. It was maybe yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of blew drink out my nose on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, crap. She posted a little picture of a really good looking blonde in a hot tub switching her butt over and a mass oh, amount my. of bubbles. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, that's, so. That's wrong. And for the, oh, I wanted to say Go for ahead. the PvP zones, I know leveling is what you need to do. But for me, I always make sure to take somebody high level with me. Mm -hmm. Or I just avoid them completely. Yeah, I still haven't been no, to the one in ESO. Let's just be honest. There's no RPing 
in PvP zones. No, 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 you're no crazy. there's no time for that. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. you're just gonna get your butt <laughs> handed to you. Yeah. Much. Well, you're sitting there typing. You're already f- flat on your ass. But uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, and so we'll, we're gonna start wrapping this up. We're we're about at our mark here. So uh, holy crap, it's already been an hour. Yeah, it has already. Been an hour. <laughs> time flew by. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's you just got to be able to back up your shit talk. Um, you know, and and here's the thing too. And, and be if, willing to lose. And if all you want yeah. to do for role play is go into a tavern and deal tavern, and deal with the, you know, who's who's sleeping with who or who's you know who's backstabbing who or the life and drama, the everyday things, you know, who's dating who, lore debates, um, on you know things like that. Really, this won't. This this stuff doesn't really won't even apply to things like that. This is pretty much just for those that are trying to pick a fight and things like that. But you also never know when that might happen too, because not every you know it's it's the it's it's role play. You never know what person is going to come in and they're like, I'm going to pick a fight, you know, and it could be perfectly legitimate reason that they start picking one. Not everyone's doing it to troll you, (laughs) which we've had try that too, but. Oh, always. <clears throat> but, you know, it won't matter if you can kick someone's ass if all you're there to do is just to have a nice conversation and, you know, role play having a drink. But that's, you know, obviously, I mean, it almost goes without saying, but that's, it still has to be said because uh, it wouldn't be much of a talk show if we didn't say it out loud. <laughs> It'd be like, <laughs> yeah, wow. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's one of those things that, you you know, you've got to balance it out. Know, know, know your server's community, know your audience that's around you, know the people that you're role-playing with, or at least get a feel for them if they're brand new. Um, you know, there's always, always going to be those people that are just, that's all they want to do. And, you know, I was like that for a long time. I love, and I still do, I still love getting into a combat fight. You know, it's, it's always fun for me, has been for over 10 years now. But it doesn't have to happen every single time. So, you guys got anything uh, else final to say? Any? No, nope, I'm any good. Final thoughts. Hold on. There's something on the message board. Jazz or y- or you can roll 100 and uppercut a dwarf in the nuts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Oh Thanks God, I remember that. Did I read that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you did. read that right. I I went to punch and. And uh, rolled a hundred, and the poor thing right in the nards. Oh, it was nice. It was bad. I was like, "Oh, this is gonna hurt." Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we and for those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, when you roll dice, at least for what we do, ones and hundreds are absolute. So if you get a one, you're basically mm-hmm. you're gonna die. Or just it's like rolling a thing. one or a twenty on a dice. Yeah. Yeah. So if I you roll a ninety-nine or a hundred, it's gonna hurt. It's bad. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna yeah. be. That poor dwarf was coughing up balls for days. It's yeah. still coughing up balls <laughs> at this point in time. <laughs> so, all right. Well, oh, I wanted to throw out there too. My Twitter is at Sibbay. So, okay. like I spelled it before. Yeah. All right. Anything else before I close out the show? I'm good. All right. Good here. Well, I want to pre- uh, thank you guys for you know tuning in. Appreciate that, of course. Uh, if you all, we do it every two weeks um, right now. So tune in live every other every other weekend here. Uh, I know our days shift, which can be a little confusing, but that's due to real life schedule conflicts. Um, you know, Jess Jess has to work usually one one day out of the week on the weekend for an ungodly long period of time. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know we have to we have to go around that, and we're more than happy to do that because that's one thing we actually haven't hit on is uh is real life always comes first over role play and things like that. So when she's got to do her job and take care of her family, or we do, that will always trump you know the show and in any role play that anybody should be doing. You don't want to end up being the that chick on the, was that Felicia Day show, The Guild, <laughs> yeah, with her kids in yeah. in dog pens while she's trying to play her MMO. You don't want to go yeah. there. That's, that's no. technically not good. So, no, that's bad. You know, appreciate you guys. You know, like I said, tuning in. Um, you can join us if you've got anything. You can join us at our Discord, of course, which you can uh, click to if you go to rpmmoradio.com. We got a link to that that's ongoing from there. Facebook at RPMO Radio, Twitter, um, all that stuff. We even got an Instagram because 
apparently there's a lot of people on Instagram. I guess that's a thing. I don't, I don't know. I guess it's it's a it's a thing that kids <laughs> kids these days use. <laughs> but yep, yeah, just uh just join us at any one of those places. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what we're doing good. We'd love to hear what we're doing bad. Love to hear anything you might want to hear us talk about in the future, or if you have questions or comments on that. We'd be more than happy to read them on the air. So, <clears throat> excuse me. But uh, that'll pretty much do it for this episode of RP MMO Radio. So what we'll have you do is just tune in next time when we'll talk about airships. Should airship companies beat their pack- passengers with delicious bags of oranges so that they won't leave a oh, bruise no. when they won't leave their seat? Uh, what? It's not topical. Bye, guys. It's not related to anything bye. in real life. Thank you for tuning in. Tune in next time on RP MMO Radio. The thoughts and opinions expressed by RP MMO Radio are just that, and should not be taken as the gospel truth, but pretty close to it. Music provided by Husky by the Geek. Visit him at youtube.com slash huskybythegeek to hear all his great rock covers.